Welcome, thank you for joining us. I'm hearing you sing with the choir, doing a bit of soprano, doing a bit of alto here and there. Yes, it's a wonderful choir and I like to tone in where I hear the line, melody line that I yeah. can hold. Yeah, what kind of melody line do you expect from the State of the, uh, State of the Nation address today? Well, President Zuma has got a very, very hard State of the Nation address today, his fourth State of the Nation address, because people will be wondering why many of the commitments he made in the last State of the Nation address have come to nothing. And the President is going to have to start by addressing that. He said that last year was the year of the job. Jobs, jobs, jobs. He'll have to explain why 107,000 more South Africans lost their jobs and why many of our partners in the BRICS countries outperformed us so dramatically economically. We do know there was an international recession, but South Africa had a very sluggish growth rate. Why and is that? Why is the country not creating jobs? Well, for many reasons, but we're not creating an environment for jobs. And in his last State of the Nation address, the President promised to do a lot about that. For example, he promised the youth wage subsidy scheme, which could have got many, many thousands of young people who've never had a job before into productive employment, not into state-created short-term jobs that are not sustainable, but into enterprises, into firms where they could be trained, where they could get the apprenticeship skills they need and then become part of the formal economy. That has never happened because the trade unions oppose it. There is so much red tape in our society that it takes eight years to get an informal housing scheme off the ground. We have to get rid of that red tape, keep as much as is necessary, but as little as possible. Because all of these things that are supposed to prevent corruption don't prevent the corrupt people from stealing money. They just prevent those who want to deliver services from delivering services at speed. That people need. Yeah. Just turn your attention a little bit more to, okay, so he must explain why the things that he said would happen have not happened. He'll have to devote part of his speech to that, yes, because people have expectations and yeah. they want to know why didn't it happen. So looking into the future, what is he likely to say? What new elements is he likely to address himself to? I think he has to talk about accelerating the climate for job creation. Unemployment and poverty are South Africa's biggest problems. The only sustainable way to address poverty is through job creation. Now, a government can't create jobs. Mm -hmm. A government can create a climate in which people want to invest, grow their businesses, start a business, and in which government regulation and laws make it easier to start a job and to get a job. And those things are quite clear what needs to be done. We have to make the labor environment much simpler. We have to loosen all the regulatory requirements that make people choose to invest in other places and not South Africa. Would that be hiring and firing as part That's of the part package? Of it. But critically, for example, what is strangling job creation in this province is Transnet. Transnet just cannot get the trains together. It's a national function, public transport is so crucial, the management of the harbour leaves much to be desired, and the long delays and inefficiencies of Transnet caused, for example, recently a major, major investor to pull out of an investment that would have created over a thousand jobs. Which one is it? It is a UAL, United Africa Lines, in the EDZ in Saldana. Mm -hmm. That was just there on the cards, and the investor said, I can't wait for Transnet anymore. Yeah. And yeah. he pushed off and he's invested uh, off the coast of Mauritius in, in um, Mozambique, okay. rather, because they're more efficient and they're more effective. We are falling behind the rest of Africa. The rest of Africa is saying, we're open for business. Mm -hmm. Kenya has overtaken us in information technology connectivity. So has Nigeria by far. So has Egypt in the middle of a civil war. We must get out of all of this red tape yeah. and focus very seriously on what we do in this economy okay. to create jobs. Do you think the president will do that? Well, deal with the red tape? I so. I certainly hope so. Yeah. He what are uh, just two more things? We we virtually out of time now. Well, I remember in the last State of the Nation address, he promised a layoff training scheme so that people wouldn't have to be retrenched in this downturn, but that they would have training. And in 2009, he announced that there was 6 billion rand for that. And from that 6 billion rand, only 6,000 people have benefited and 900,000 have lost their jobs. Yes. He needs to explain why the money isn't being used for what it's intended. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Helen Zille is leader of the opposition, also Premier of the Western Cape, joining us here on Morning Live. Talking